The next movie I'm doing is the Zellner Brothers. They're just these brilliant directors who I've wanted to work with for a long time. And I'm playing a Sasquatch in full makeup, in full body hair, no lines. I grunt, but no lines. And I'm so looking forward to this. Jesse welcomes the Variety Lounge on a very warm day at the Sarajevo Film Festival. How are you enjoying the festival so far? Well, thank you so much for having me, Guy, and I, this is my favorite place in the world. I'm so happy to be here, and I love this festival. You're here, of course, with your directorial debut. Um, what made you decide that you were ready to direct a film? I had written plays and per performed in my own plays for the last 15 years. After my last play, I started writing a book for Audible, and after I finished that Audible book, I uh, took one section of it and I thought, oh, this is such an interesting character that I'd like to explore. There was a woman at, at 18 years old at a, on a college campus in the audiobook, and I thought, thought it'd be great to see her later in her life um, uh, running the shelter that she starts interning for in the book and with a son who is so um, uninterested in her important work. So I started writing it as a movie. Did you always think you were eventually going to direct one? Maybe unconsciously I thought I would direct a movie, um, but I never allowed myself to think of it explicitly because it just seems like such a cliche that an actor, you know, out of work for a few months decides and tells everybody he's going to direct something and they never do. And so I just was so fearful of becoming that cliche that I probably never admitted to the idea that maybe I would find it interesting. There was a bit of a learning curve for me only because I was probably nervous to talk to the actors, which you would think as an actor myself would be the easiest thing. But I've received so many bad notes in my life as an actor that I think I was probably so unnecessarily fearful that I would be giving them to my actors. I would say there was like a, just a week of a learning curve where I realized I could talk to Julianne more between the scenes and she's not going to think I'm an idiot. Did you write the part for screen with her in mind? I did write it with her in mind because I just think she's the best. She does something so well in this movie that um, I, I maybe have seen her do, in, 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 uh, which is just like very bright. She can be very cold and warm at the same time. It's a, just an unusual juxtaposition. It's what I like to do as an actor too. So, uh, characters that can be cold and feeling at the same time. That you can tense that their coldness comes from their own insecurities rather than their own malice. So I was writing that because I like performing that. And she does it so well. I, I mean, you know, and has done it so well for so long. And I was just so thrilled. I, but I knew that she would like it. A, I feel like I won the lottery that she wanted to do it. But B, I knew she would like it because my writing comes from a place of character and so uh, and I read a million scripts as an actor so I kind of have a sense of what actors like and I was so lucky that she said yes but also I thought she would uh, it would appeal to her but in terms of actually cinematically I felt very confident because I've worked on so many great movies with great directors with very limited resources frequently and so I know how to like get a, a lot done efficiently and to make something look good we were shooting on film so I knew we had an interesting aesthetic just visually um, through the medium. And then I was working with this wonderful cinematographer, Benjamin Loeb, and um, we just decided it would be interesting to use zooms, which I've always loved. Every time I'm acting in a scene and there's a zoom, I love it because it just provides some tension that even a performer can't uh, um, provide themselves. And working on film, using zooms, made it feel like this kind of homemade throwback style. And so it started just kind of telling us what it would be. I think a lot of people might not know that Emma Stone produced your movie with yeah. her husband, Dave McCary. How did that collaboration come about? I never talk about what I'm writing to people, but I've known Emma and Dave, um, but I never tell them I was writing it. But uh, Julianne Moore's agent represents Emma. And so Emma and Dave came to their agent and said, uh, do you have any scripts? We're thinking of starting a production company in a year. Do you have any scripts? Maybe we can get into the habit of reading. And her agent, thank goodness, said, yes, actually, your friend Jesse wrote the script, sent it to Julianne. And so they called me and said, not only did we read your script, but we want to start a company and we want to be the first movie, this would be the first movie. Is that okay? I was like, what do you mean, is that okay? Of course, I'm sitting in my hotel room with no nothing, you know, so of course. There's a lot of generational conflicts in this movie. You've got Finn Wolfhard's kind of Gen Z character yeah. kind of butting heads with his baby boomer parents. Yeah. You're in the middle as a millennial. Do you kind of sympathize with both sides? Yes, I'm exactly. I'm right in the middle. And, you know, I looked at my parents' generation, which I would call um, a protester and Vietnam era activist. And of course, that's what my parents were. My parents are, you know, left wing Jews, pacifist left wing Jews, you know, and um, so that's who I was raised by. And then I see the younger generation, which is kind of 
active, where they're activists in a different way, and the, their younger activism seems less about grouping together and more about expressing your own individual activism. I don't think my parents' generation would appreciate that kind of activism because there's an emphasis on the self, even though they're both well-meaning and both probably with the same ideas. What I was trying to show in the movie is that this kid is, is he's not an activist. In fact, he's a performer like I am, and he has a very wide fan base, but it's very shallow interactions with them. And his mother has a very narrow um, uh, group of people she's helping. She has a domestic violence shelter, so she's helping you know 30 women in life or death situations, and he's performing for 20,000 people, trying to ask the question, is, is what they both do valuable? And is what this kid does as a performer valuable? In, even though his mother's work is so much more immediately, evidently valuable. Are you more comfortable telling stories than performing them? Oh, I still love acting so much, but I love being able to um, kind of do a million different things because I never know what's gonna hit me as something that I love. When I was younger, I was mainly interested in stand-up comedy and then I found comedy films, and then I found dramatic films, and now I found the thing I really love, and maybe that will change as well. And so I feel like I just want to stay busy. Um, as you know from covering the arts uh, uh, so extensively, there's no stability. And so to me, if you're not changing along with, with tastes, with your own tastes, with the taste of the public, it's easy to just get really depressed. Jesse, thank you so much for joining us at the Variety Lounge. Thank you, Guy.